All right, what we're going to look at first is basically uh, this right here, and I know this is, might be a little bit difficult to try to visualize, but what we're looking at basically is a merry-go-round, uh, also known as a carousel, depending on what you're talking about. And depending on the carousel or merry-go-round you've went to, whether it's old, new, fancy, or, or not fancy, um, basically the concept is, is these two things, they rotate around the outside of the circle. So um, what you got is you've got, you know, uh, if the floor is fixed, then these things will move uh, kind of along the same uh, path. Where if you start here and you do full one full revolution around your circle, then they would end in the same place. Well, what we're talking about there is we basically are looking at two different things. We're talking about what we call angular speed and also linear speed. So angle is how much of the angle from here when you rotate around, how much of the angle is uh, being used by your rotation. And we also have linear speed. And linear speed actually talks about the arc length, about how long is the arc that you are traveling. So we're going to look at those two things. One thing you need to know when you're dealing with these is that uh, to find speed of something, it's always divided by time. So if you're looking at your speed in your car, it's your distance divided by time. If you're looking at, you know, uh, how long it takes you to eat your speed of eating pizza, it would be how many pieces per minute or whatever you're trying to do. If you're talking about typing, it would be your number of words per minute. So it always has to deal with time. So kind of keep that in mind when we're talking about these things. And let's see if we can't look at a couple formulas. So when we're talking about, uh, we'll start with angular speed. When we're talking about angular speed, it's going to be the equation omega, or this nice little cursive W here, is equal to, of course, what it's going to have to deal with is our angle. So it's the amount of angle that we traveled over a certain time. And that's how we're going to calculate our angular speed. Linear speed's a little bit different. This time it's epsilon. There's this letter right here. They use Greek letters, of course, when we're talking about this stuff. To to Talking about our linear speed, we're going to use our arc length divided by our time. So two interesting formulas that are kind of brought up because uh, we are using angles and, and rotation and stuff like that. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to try to define our uh, linear speed in terms of our angular speed. If you notice in both these formulas, what they have in common is this t. So what we can do is we can solve for t in both of them. We can multiply both sides by t and then divide this side by w, multiply both sides by t, divide this side by epsilon, and then we'll get these values for our formulas. And then what we'll do now is since t is equal to this and t is equal to this, we can say that those two things have to be equal to each other. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to replace what we know our arc length is equal to. So s is the measure of our arc length, so what we'll do is we'll replace it. Well, before what we had discovered is that our arc length formula is s is equal to r theta. So we'll just take out s and put r theta. So now our formula looks a little something like this. All right, and now what we can do is we can either do one of two things. You can cross multiply since you're dealing with a proportion, we could multiply by your common denominator. But either way, you're going to have uh, your nice little epsilon here times theta is equal to r theta times omega. All right, now what I want to do is get rid of the common factor here. So I'm going to divide both sides by theta. So when I do that, the thetas will cancel. So what we're going to get is we'll get this is equal to r of omega. And just a couple uh, reference, again, that represents our linear speed. So our linear speed is equal to our radius times our angular speed. So that's what that stands for, linear speed is equal to your angular speed times your radius. Okay, so how quickly something travels when you're going around in a circle is basically it's dependent upon how far you are away from the center. So the longer the radius, the more distance something has to travel. Okay, and if you keep the angular speed the same and you change your radius, then uh, yeah, you're going to have a, a, a much larger, oops, let me write speed here. 
you're going to have a much, much larger um, uh, linear speed. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, there are a couple things that we can do that. If you're talking about hitting a golf ball, if you want to hit a golf ball further, all you have to do is get a longer club. Because if you're swinging at the same rate of speed, and as long as your timing's good, you'll be able to create a larger uh, linear speed. Also, if you think about this, if you think about uh, you basically spinning a kid around, if you hold a kid by his hands and you spin him around, his head's not going to move as much because his head's going to be closer to your body. Where if you spin a kid around by holding his ankles, that kid's head is actually going to travel a larger distance and therefore the kid will be a little bit more dizzy. And another example uh, is like if you're running on a track. So if I were to start people at the same spot, I know my things are a little bit off, and I say go, and we're going to race to right here. Okay, and if they end up crossing the line at the exact same time, what's true is their angular speed is the same. So they'll have the same angular speed because across the angle from here to here, they have gone the same speed. But what's different is their linear speed. So in this example, the linear speed, the yellow uh, dot actually has a greater linear speed than the green dot because the radius for the yellow is more than the radius of the green and therefore that radius or the yellow dot will have traveled further than the green one. There you go, a little bit about linear and angular speed and we'll look at a couple examples in our homework.